Hello and welcome everyone to the Charters of Freedom channel. Today we're going to talk about the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and how it does not explicitly grant individual rights to bear arms. Yes, you heard that correctly. The Second Amendment does not specifically grant individuals rights to gun ownership. And we believe this issue needs to be addressed going forward with a new amendment to the Constitution, which we will share with you in this presentation. First, let's start off with the language of the Second Amendment, which very simply says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now let's break that down into its four individual components. First, it starts with a well-regulated militia. Later in this presentation, we will talk about what a militia was at the time the Constitution was drafted and what a militia is today in modern America. Next, it says that we need the militia for the security of a free state. Then it says that the people have the right to bear arms so that security can be provided through militia. The folks in support of individual rights theory of gun ownership want to cherry pick this phrase and focus on this language only. But this is obviously inappropriate because the language is part of a more complex sentence that establishes the use of arms in the context of militia. And finally, it affirmatively states that the people's right to an armed and well-regulated militia shall not be infringed. So our Constitution affirmatively grants members of militia the right to bear arms, but it unfortunately says nothing about the right of individuals to bear arms. Now let's talk about militia for a minute and what a militia constituted at the time the Constitution was drafted in comparison to what they are today in modern America. According to a legal historian with Stanford University, colonial militia consisted of private citizens who banded together to protect their communities through formal or informal military units and policing organizations from invading foreign nations uprisings from the unfortunately enslaved people, and uprisings from oppressed native populations who were present throughout the undeveloped U.S. and its territories. So before there was established security organizations to protect the newly minted nation, our scrappy forefathers banded together in militia to protect our nation from a variety of issues. Now, fast forward close to 250 years to today's version of militia which consist of highly trained, organized, funded, and armed federal organizations like the Army, Navy, Air Force, FBI, U.S. Marshals, Secret Service, U.S. Capitol Police, Customs and Border Patrol, state organizations like Highway Patrols, local organizations like Police Departments, and Sheriff's Departments. In total, there are about 2.4 million members of our military and law enforcement, which constitute our version of modern-day militia. To put this in perspective, there are currently about seven members of our military and law enforcement for every 1,000 Americans. So our Constitution firmly states that we should arm our militia, which we have done from our colonial militia to our formal military and law enforcement organizations. But what about individual rights to guns? Well, our glorious Supreme Court has tried to resolve the issue by interpreting our Constitution in context of the Second Amendment by cobbling together numerous cases, including but not limited to those presented in the table, and with the most recent Bruin case out of New York. But we here at the Charters of Freedom believe the best and most direct approach to addressing individual gun rights would be a new 28th Amendment to the Constitution which potentially says law-abiding citizens who are 21 years of age or older have the right to bear reasonable weapons for protection, hunting, sport, and as part of a historical collection. Now let's break down our proposed amendment piece by piece. The first part requires citizens to be in good legal standing. This provision allows our state legislatures and or our federal Congress to limit ownership, for example, to people who are non-felons, have no weapons violations, and potentially have obtained a license or passing stringent safety and training courses. It also allows our legislatures to impose harsh penalties on those who violate legal standards for ownership and control. 
The next provision obviously limits ownership to adults who are 21 or older. It does not preclude citizens under the age of 21 from using a weapon under the supervision of an adult owner, but it could potentially make the adult owner legally and criminally responsible for any misdeed incurred by the underage user of the weapon. The third provision limits ownership of weapons to those that provide reasonable protection. So, for example, in a densely populated city with substantial saturation of law enforcement, a reasonable weapon might be a canister of mace or a taser, while a reasonable weapon in a rural area where there is sparse law enforcement might be a holstered pistol. Again, this amendment allows for our representatives to set legal standards on what a reasonable use is in a variety of situations. The fourth provision protects hunters and allows them to use a reasonable weapon in the fair chase of wild game. A reasonable weapon in this situation could be limited capacity rifle, pistol, or bow as potential defined by our elected representatives. The fifth provision protects sports shooters by allowing them to use a weapon for events like target practice, skeet shooting, or archery. And finally, the proposed amendment allows enthusiasts to accumulate weapons as part of a collection for posterity. Again, it allows our elected representatives to set boundaries on what a reasonable historical collection would constitute. It, for example, could forbid the collection of excessive amounts of high-powered, fully automatic weapons that would not be useful in fair chase of wild game. In conclusion, the key word in this proposed amendment is reasonable. We think that law-abiding citizens over the age of 21 should be allowed access to weapons that are congruent with their environment. There you have it, the Charters of Freedom's proposed 28th Amendment to define weapon and gun rights for individuals. Thank you. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're especially interested to hear your comments on our proposed 28th Amendment.